Assist me anytime you get ready. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. Take your Bibles tonight and turn in the Word of God to Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 20. If you know anything about Exodus 20, Exodus 20 is um, where the Ten Commandments, God was first given to Moses. And um, but yet there's something that took place after, right after God gave him the very Tenth Commandment. And I want to begin reading there tonight, verse 18, Exodus 20, verse 18. Hallelujah. It says, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood far off. This is how it appeared to those people on top of Mount Sinai as God came down and talked with Moses. This was the description of how it looked and how it sounded. When God was speaking, it sounded like thunder, lightnings and noise of trumpet. Somebody shout a Holy Ghost storm. <laughs> God, amen. And, and it sounded like the noise of a trumpet. You know, that's in Revelation chapter 1, verses 10. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a great voice that sounded like a trumpet. Ain't that amazing? God sounded like a song. God sounded like music. I'm telling you, you want to hear God speak? Amen. Start worshiping Him with music. Come on, somebody. Off to God's voice will come right in the middle of a song. Come on, somebody. Right after, amen, a, a season of praise. Amen. And God's voice sounded like the noise of a trumpet. Amen. Exodus 20, verses 18. Hallelujah. And that's what Revelation again 1.10 says that David, or excuse me, John heard behind him a great voice and it sounded like a trumpet. Hallelujah. God's voice sounded like a song. And the mountain was smoking. I mean, it was on fire with the presence of God. And listen what happened when the people saw this. They removed. That means they backed away and it stood afar off. Instead of drawing nigh to it, they removed from it. They stepped away from it. Listen what happened in verse 19. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Don't forget that. But let God speak with us. Don't let Him speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, or to test you. And that His fear, His reverence, may be before your faces, that you sin not. Why? Wow. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. The people had a wrong fear of God. They feared to come close to Him. Here's why. As they said, if God starts talking, we'll die. And you know, there's some people in modern Christendom, they don't want to come any closer because they know if they come any closer, when God talks, He's going to kill something. Somebody shout, when God starts talking, and people start drawing close, He's going to kill something. He said, I'm moving like this, so I want to prove you, because I want you to experience my fear so you'll stop sinning. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody shout, when God starts talking, He will kill things. That's why some people don't want to hear from God. They'd rather hear a word than the word. Come on, somebody. They'd rather hear about God, a little a bedtime story. See, it's one thing to hear about God, and it's another to hear from God. Somebody shout, there's two different ways. You can just hear about Him. Somebody can read the story about Him. Somebody can just talk about Him, sing about Him. But if you ever hear from Him, come on, say, come on, somebody shout, He's going to go after sin. He's going to go after the thing that comes between you and Him, that keeps you from Him, that keeps you in distance from Him. Somebody shout, there's a killing going to happen tonight. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, He's going to preach us to death. <laughs> Brother Johnson said, oh Lord, I'm so happy. Glory to God, I'm so happy. Hallelujah. 
Somebody asked one time, said, my God, what you doing, trying to kill us? Because they was talking about me preaching long. I said, yeah, you dead yet? Because <laughs> real revival, come on somebody, is a funeral. Yeah. A real move of God requires death. Luke 9, 23, Jesus said unto them all, look at your neighbor and say, so that means you too. He said unto them all, if any man's going to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross. Uh, amen. Take up his cross. Don't mean say how pretty my cross is. We make the cross. Uh, amen. That it's beautiful. There's even songs talked about how beautiful it is. Uh, but I want you to know the cross of Christ uh, is still rated R. I refused to edit the cross. It was gross because my sin was gross. Uh, come on, somebody. It was awful because my life before Christ was awful. And when Jesus said, if you're going to come after me, take up my cross, uh, he's talking about being crucified. Uh, he's talking about dying. Uh, come on, modern Christian, do not offer the cross no more. Uh, hallelujah. She don't offer the message of the cross like this no more. She says, just come and shake the preacher's hand. Uh, join the church and throw some tithes in the plate. Uh, come on, somebody. Amen. Go to God and God. show up to church uh, uh, every Sunday morning. Uh, but let me tell you, true Christianity ain't hanging out around the cross. Uh, it's climbing up on the cross uh, and dying to your will, your ways. Uh, come on, somebody. Giving Christ everything. Uh, selling out. Uh, dying. Come on. If any man uh, come after me, uh, let him deny himself. Uh, take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. Somebody shout, if you're going to come after Jesus. Jesus said, you must deny yourself. That means it can't no longer be about you. Hello. He said, you're going to have to take up your cross. You're going to have to die to yourself. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, do you feel a killing taking place? Look at your neighbor and say, he's come to assassinate you tonight. He, yeah, come on, somebody. I don't feel like I preached unless I killed something in somebody. Till I made somebody irritated somewhere. Come on, somebody. My wife's there waving and said, you irritate me now. Hallelujah. I fix that, Mama, later on. Hallelujah. Somebody shot something, you got to die. Hallelujah, before something can live. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians 1 11 says the sufferings of Christ uh, and his glory that should follow. A lot of times we're wanting the glory of God, uh, but we don't want the cross. Somebody shout, there's got to be some oil before there's some glory. There's got to be some dying before there's some living. Jesus couldn't skip the cross uh, and get to the empty tomb where the glory of God manifested. Uh, he had to first go on the cross. Come on, somebody. Friend, we're living in an age and a time uh, where men would want, they want the glory of God, so to speak. They say they want the power of God. Uh, hallelujah. But look at your neighbor and say, you're going to have to die for it. you got to die for it. Somebody shout, this is a killer word tonight. Last night I preached to you a cross word, a different look at the cross. Hallelujah. But tonight I'm preaching about the cross again. And I ain't just talking about his, I'm talking about ours that he required for us to take up. Somebody shout, this is a killer word tonight. Hallelujah. He wants to kill something in us. Why? Because when God starts talking, somebody shout, things must die. Amen. Go to God. If God really comes close to you and you get close to God, he'll speak in your life. We call it being sanctified, being separated from sin. Hallelujah. If you're hanging out with somebody you ain't supposed to, that's not a part of God's plan for your life, if you come nigh him and sell out and give him everything, he'll start killing relationships in your life that you think are relationships but are nothing more than relationships. Somebody say you got relationships or relationships. You know what a relationship is? It's a blood sucking. Come on, somebody, union. Hello? You know how to breathe breathing. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33, he said in the word of God that uh, uh, evil communications corrupts good manners. Hello? Ecclesiastes 9 and 18 said one sinner destroys much good. Well, Brother Marvin, you just don't know how pretty she is. I know she ain't pretty. She's pretty. In South Georgia, ain't nothing pretty. Pretty, it's pretty. Come on, somebody. You just don't know, Brother Marvin, how pretty she is. Come on, somebody shout, ugly as bone beef. Ugly as bone beef. breathing, breathing. I tell you that, that, come on now. Hello, ain't nobody here the Holy Ghost. Can I just make it real to you? Amen. I promise you in hell, 
that prostitute, that whore, come on, that one that poses porn in pornography, amen, she ain't got no curb, she ain't nothing but burning bones, the stench of burning dead flesh forever. You got to look at it that way. Come on, somebody. Hello? Seductive Susie may have all the curves, the lips, and the hips. Come on, church. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? But if you start drawing now to Jesus, and Jesus really starts speaking in your life, the sword of His Spirit, Ephesians 6, 17, will come, and He will do surgery. He will do sanctification. You, Who you thought, amen, you're supposed to be with may not just be the one God has chosen. Somebody shout, when you get close to Him, He'll start talking, and things will start dying. And some of the things, first things He'll start killing his relationships. Come on, somebody. Things. Amen. Glory to God. But Brother Martin, you just don't know how handsome he is. Oh, hard on Harry. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Hello? Oh, oh, hormone Harry may say, if you love me, come on, go ahead and let's, you know, do something, amen, that only married people do. Uh, somebody shout, that's when you need to take all five of your fingers, uh, ball them in the palm of your hand and hit hormone Harry upside the head. Uh, come on, somebody, and say, I'll, I'll see you later, you pervert. Uh, somebody shout, that's the wrong one. Ain't nobody here the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you're going to walk with God, uh, you got to walk in purity. If you want God to use you, uh, he's got to kill things in your life. Uh, if you want God God to manifest his power through your life. He's going to have to separate you, sanctify you from the world. Come on. Amen. And the children of Israel saw God manifesting in fire like this and they just backed away. They thought, no, we'll just we'll just keep our pneumonia over here. We'll just settle for listening to the preacher preach. Let God speak to him. But Lord, we don't want to come any closer. We're just satisfied with a little religion because God, if we really sell out, if we really take up the cross, if we really get close to this fire. This fire is going to begin to purge us. It's going to begin to awaken us to understand that there's some things in our life that ain't right and we're going to have to walk away from. See, modern Christian says just receive Jesus and keep all you got. But that ain't the biblical Christianity. That's a counterfeit Christianity. The cross field, come on somebody, Christianity that Jesus preached, the apostles preached, requires death. It requires you to walk away from sin. It requires you to come close enough to Christ uh, where he can burn away, uh, where he can burn up, uh, where he can remove things out of your life. 